In this video, I wanna go ahead and look at the pencil, the marker, and the airbrush tools. But to begin that, I wanna start with the pastel. I'm currently using the square hard at a size of 70. And I wanna do what we've done before, which is I'm gonna start with a color of white. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna scrub in to fill in this canvas texture. And this is going to be tracking the structure of this. We remember this from the pastel video. So if I come over here and I switch to blue, and I come over and I make a mark across the top of that, you can see I get a very different result as I'm marking over the areas that are blank canvas versus the areas that have that structure filled in by the white. You can see very clearly that this is a distinctly softer mark with less of that texture and more of the brush character. So you can see as soon as we hit back over the blank canvas, you can see again, we're seeing that canvas texture very clearly. If I come over here and I right click on this brush and I say copy brush preset, then I come over here to the marker tool and I right click and I say paste brush preset. You're gonna see that I get the same brush over here in the marker. And what I wanna do is I just wanna set the size to be something close to what we had over there, so 70. And I'm gonna come back over here and do the exact same thing. So I'll start with the white. You can see I filled in that canvas texture with the white. And now what I wanna do is I wanna come back over here with the blue and do the same thing, a single stroke. And I want you to see that we get a very different mark. And the reason why is because the pencil, the marker and the airbrush categories are all going to do something similar but different to what we get with the pastel in the sense that the underlying technology of those three categories does not track the structure like the pastel does. Instead, it's going to give us that same canvas texture no matter where we mark, no matter how much paint and buildup that we have underneath the stroke. It's always gonna give us that canvas texture. This is a distinct difference that you see with the pencil, the marker, and the airbrush categories that's different from the pastel. Now, the important thing to understand about that is that otherwise, these guys are all identical to the pastel and basically everything works the same, which is the reason why I'm using the pastel brush. If I come over here and I clear this layer off and then I come over to the pencil and I right click and I say paste brush preset to put the square hard here. And I come over here to the airbrush and I say paste brush preset to put the square there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to the pencil and set the size to 100, which is the maximum for pencil. Then I'm gonna come over here to the marker and I'm gonna set the size down to 45, which is going to be the size that's going to match what we have when we have a size of 100 for the pencil. Then I'm gonna come over here to the airbrush and I'm gonna set the size down to 33, which is going to be the size that's going to match what we get when we're working with the size of 100 for pencil and a size of 45 for the marker. So now they're all equalized in terms of their current size. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the square hard in all three. Go ahead and scrub out like so. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same in all three. So I just want you to see that they're all identical and they're all very similar to the pastel technology, except for the fact that they do not track the structure of the underlying strokes. So you can see very clearly how that works. Now, that said, if I come over here and I just clear this out, and I come back over here to the pencil and I reset that back to its default setting of a size of 30, and I try any of these other pencil tools, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose a color of black so that we get a proper pencil mark. And I'm gonna use the brush of 2H here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark, and you can see that we're gonna get a very naturalistic looking pencil here, and if I choose the charcoal, we're gonna get a very different type of mark. It's gonna be closer to something like what we would see with the pastel, but again, it doesn't track the structure the way a pastel would. Now, if you wanted this to behave more like a pastel, you could always copy this and paste it into the pastel tool, and then you'd be able to use it just like a pastel. However, here in the pencil category, it's not going to track that structure. Then if I come over here to the marker and I reset this back to its default properties, a size of 30, and I choose the chisel, which is gonna be one of the default markers, you can see here that I get a very different mark yet again. Even though it's using the exact same underlying technology as these two pencil brushes, this marker is gonna give us a very different look. And if I try the bullet, you can see again, we're gonna get a very different look. This is a much more digital look than what we got when we were working with these two pencils. If I come over here to the airbrush and I try the spray one, you can see I get a very digital looking airbrush. Spray two, spray three, and spray four are all gonna give us different degrees of a airbrush type spray. And you can see again, that even though it's using the exact same technology, and we saw that very clearly by looking at the square hards all at the same size, you can see that we're going to be getting very different marks. And again, it's important to remember that the pencil category is gonna be best for small type brushes, the marker category is going to be best for medium sized brushes, and the airbrush category is gonna be best for large brushes because the airbrush can actually produce some very large marks like what you can see here at the default size. 
So this is the basic way that you can understand these three categories is that they all operate on the same underlying technology. And if you were coming from a program like Photoshop and you were looking for the brush technologies that were most similar to what you get in Photoshop, you would probably want to use the pencil, the marker, and the airbrush, probably starting with the airbrush because it's gonna give you the largest possible size. And then you would just build your Photoshop style brushes using these technologies because at the end of the day, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna give you the results that are closest to what you would get in Photoshop. Now that said, this brings us to an important point. Why are these guys all giving us such different results, even though they're all using identical technology under the hood, aside from the differences in size? Well, that's because of this little icon that you can see right here. If I click this, this is going to launch the Brush Creator. And the Brush Creator is a set of settings that you can see here. And these guys are all going to determine the characteristics of each of these individual brushes. If I choose a different brush, you'll see all of my settings change. And you can see how the settings here are going to modify the results that we get when we use that brush. And this is going to be completely separate than the idea of the properties of the individual tools that we see up here. So it's a good idea if you want to understand more of what's going on under the hood in terms of the individual brush settings that's separate from what we get with the properties of these categories here, then it's a good idea to understand the brush creator. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this particular series. Instead, I'm just gonna go ahead and collapse that for right now. And the reason why is because I'm going to create a dedicated series in the near future for nothing but understanding how to create brushes and modify brushes using the brush creator. Now that said, I'm done with what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna come over, clear off this layer, and we're gonna go ahead and pick up from this point in the next video.